Hey! If you've ever scrolled Instagram and seen beautiful lean people and their amazing meal prep videos with all these different components and sauces while simultaneously eating a dry old crust that your children left at breakfast, then this video is for you. I used to look at these videos online and see beautiful people that I wanted to look like. They had six pack abs and they were prepping all of these different sauces and components and they would put them into these beautiful little mason jars and I truly thought that in order to lose weight and be successful, I had to do something similar. But as a busy mum and someone who struggles with anxiety and other mental health issues, someone who is chaotic and really just doesn't find the time to do that, it never worked for me and I always ended up feeling like a failure. Since losing 40 pounds and now being able to maintain it for coming up five years, which is a long time, I've learned that there are four principles that allow you to meal prep very fast, have endless combinations of meals that you actually enjoy, and are intentionally low in calories so that you can get into that calorie deficit and start losing weight if that is your goal. Before we get into it, can we take a moment to appreciate these new pants that I got? So I bought these, they're from the men's section, and what I love about them is that they have this little part here where you can easily tighten or loosen it which is very cool I've got it on the tighter setting right now that's on both sides and how cool is that so when you get your pants out of the wash you know how they're like super tight let me know if you know what I'm talking about you can loosen them and then if you eat a big meal or towards the you can loosen them more or towards the end of the day when your pants start to loosen you can tighten them so because they're from the men's section they actually have pockets just share with me my excitement for one second. What we're gonna do first is go through these four principles. I'm gonna show you the prep that I do as we go through that, and then we're going to put some of these things together. Principle number one is to always have some kind of cooked starch that is ready to go. We're gonna be using something called the HATS framework, which I talk about in this video here, so definitely go and watch that next. Now, in that video, I use that to show how to build a weight loss bowl. And if you're wanting a really deep dive into how to do that so that you can consistently build meals that get you into that weight loss zone, then I've made a free mini course for you. You can check that out in the description. We're gonna use that same HATS framework for actually meal prepping the components to put together these kind of bowls which is a really fancy way for saying have foods in your fridge and your cupboard that are ready to throw meals together so that you can have something ready in 15 minutes before you go to Domino's and order pizza because it's just easier to do it at home I've literally done that a million times maybe not a million but you get the idea I like Domino's pizza the hats framework is half starch a buttload of veg which a butt load is a real measurement I'm not just saying that a tiny bit of fat and then spice it up. So we want to start with having starches that are ready to go in your fridge, in your cupboard at all time. When I say starch, I'm talking about potatoes, rice, beans, anything that is slightly higher in calories that is still a carby source. This is where you're going to get most of your calories from inside of the meal. And consistently having prepped starches is one of the biggest impactors for our clients inside of Lean of Plants in order to lose a ton of weight and actually keep it off because they're ready to go. So let's prep some starches. This is not a starchy veg, neither are onions, but they're gonna go great roasted, neither are carrots actually, but they're gonna roast really well, so I'm gonna do them at the same time. my try of veg that I'm going to put in right now and like I said these carrots they are not starchy veggies that's just a bonus because it means that I'm eating more lower calorie veggies um, with my roast veggies and because I'm trying to put things that cook at a similar time together um, parsnips carrot and potato all cook at a similar time it's basically to do with the water content or the hardness of a vegetable how long it's going to cook so these kind of very, very hard vegetables take longer to cook. Softer vegetables like sweet potato, onions, um, leek are gonna take a lot quicker. And I'm gonna put some garlic salt on and get these bad boys started. Oh baby.
Alrighty, so that's cooking up and I also want to cook up some of these big couscous because I had this in a restaurant the other day. It was a very boring sad salad for $25 when I was at a friend's birthday party. One of the only vegan options there. Anyway, this was really nice. It added a lot of texture to the salad. And so I've never cooked this big pearl couscous before, but I thought it would be a nice thing to have to add to my roast veggie just to give it a bit more interest and texture. But I'd like to be inspired by the food that I see online and the food that I eat in other places, but I'm very select about that. I will try and take one component and add it to an already established system as opposed to recreating the system every time. So if I see a meal prep video and I'm like, huh, I like the way that they did X. I'm gonna try that. I pick out one thing to try. I'm not create, recreating everything. So same with this. I had this in a restaurant. I'm like, I wanna add this to a system that's already prepped. I'm not gonna try and recreate the salad that I had. Wasn't worth it anyway. The point of this is to establish systems so that you build habits and routine and you get confident doing that. And then you can spice it up by like adding different things later. And this on the packet, it does say to use oil. It says, heat one tablespoon of oil in a saucepan. I'm gonna use a tiny bit of this because spray oil because I'm a bit scared at how it's gonna turn out without any oil. And I do this very, very occasionally where I'll use a very, very, very small amount. You wanna know something really cool? At this point, you've actually done the hardest part, which is prep your starches. So the second piece of the HATS framework is to always have some kind of veggie. So we said a buttload of veg. That's having veggies ready to go. We did that with the onion, the leek, the carrot that is cooking up. And we can also do it by having a few things in the fridge that are ready to be steamed or used as raw things. This is actually the easiest part because veggies are so fast. They only take about five minutes to cook or you don't need to cook them. If you've got access to cherry tomatoes, capsicum, what else? Lettuce, rocket, bell peppers, grated, little baby grated carrots. Oh, I don't even know. Like all the things that you go to if you go to literally any supermarket in the States. And the more of these things that you can buy pre-prepped, the easier your life is going to be because it's you're removing an obstacle to you actually eating it. Do not get caught in this idea that you have to grow your own vegetables and eat organic and chop everything from scratch in order to be successful because, simple question, is that working for you right now? It don't work for me, so I try and make my life as easy as possible because I'm a busy person. Alright, these are ready to go. These are the veggies I prepped up. And how I know? Squish test. Can I squish them? Yes. Looking good. Okay, dead serious. When it comes to veggie prep, you really don't need more than just breaking up the broccoli when you get home from the supermarket or buying it already uh, chopped like this. Easiest thing, just do it as soon as you come home. Big visual container so I can see it. Got these containers from Kmart, I know people are gonna ask. Lettuce, always, always, if you're a salad muncher, you wanna have salad, have some kind of greens that you actually enjoy. This is a masculine mix. I also love kale, so I've got kale in there. I love rocket, iceberg lettuce, like any kind of salady stuff that you will eat have it ready to go. Tomatoes are another great one and I always, pretty much always have tomatoes. If I was in a place where I could get cherry tomatoes I would 100% have them. And remember what I said about buy as many pre-prepped already ingredients as you can to make your life easier. I've already got some carrots so I'm not going to bother with that. There's not a lot there. It is what it is. Beetroot as well. So we've done our prepped our starches which is our half starch in the hats framework. We've got our veggies. They are ready to go. We'll cook up it really quickly. Now we need to get our little bit of fat. The thing here is that this is gonna add flavor to your meals, it's gonna make them more enjoyable, and it's going to give you a healthy fat source. I do believe there are people who can enjoy meals without a specific fat source. Whether that is healthy or not, it's gonna depend. So many other situations that are going on in your life. I do believe that it's healthy, and I believe that the research supports that it's healthy to have healthy fat sources. The other thing is that most of us have come from eating a ton of mayonnaise, eating cheeses, uh, growing up having salads that are absolutely smothered in some kind of dressing. So to go cold turkey and then not have some kind of 
fatty thing in your meal to make it taste and feel more decadent is is a recipe for disaster because you're not going to enjoy what you're doing. So my easiest go-to is this hummus right here. This is my absolute favorite hummus. This is a New Zealand one. Um, it's very smoky, it's very creamy. So I don't make my own hummus, but you totally can if you have the time and inclination. Otherwise you can buy oil-free hummuses. This one is not. The other thing that I like to do is olives. Because this again is killing two birds with one stone. It's a healthy fat source. It's going to add salt and flavor to my meal. It's going to add some texture in there to make it taste more delicious. And it's something that I don't have to prepare. I'm not spending hours in the kitchen. I'm just buying the jar and then shoving it into things. Recently I've been making up a tahini dressing. And I, I did this in a recent video where I shared some salads that I make each week. Which uses this framework. I'm putting in things like miso paste to give it some umami taste some lemon, cinnamon in there, some salt and pepper, mix it up with water. I know a lot of people prep salad dressings and sauces like this in advance and use them over a few days. I don't find that I actually use it when I do this. So I prefer to make a small batch very fast and have like a simple go-to recipe like that and then reuse that when I want to, as in just cook it up from scratch or, or make it from scratch or simply just add some hummus with lemon. I was scrolling through Instagram recently and I came across this recipe. As you can, you can see that this person here, they used a lot of oil and that's not something that I would want to do. But I was inspired by this because I was like, oh, I could make something super similar. I really like the idea of making this nutritional yeast, tofu -y kind of thing to put on the base. So I'm going to have a go doing that just to see how it goes and I'm going to use up some of my roast veggies for this because it looks real yum. You can be inspired by these things that you see, but you don't have to take every single element. I'm not going to go and roast all my veggies and have to get exactly the same veggies as this girl. I'm not going to go and put them with a ton of oil. I'm not going to make up a pesto with pistachio nuts because I'm not a millionaire. There's no basil in New Zealand right now. But I'm going to go, oh, the tofu thing, that looks nice as a dressing, or it looks nice as something, so I'm going to use that. So let's give that a go. Let's do it. final piece of the hats framework is to spice it up. You want your meals to taste good so that you keep coming back to them. And we're already doing that with our dressings and our hummus or anything else, olives and things like that. But what I found is if I have a little kind of fancy component, like pickled onions or some toasted sesame or uh, like a, some herbs or something like that, it really just takes my meal to the next level. And it also becomes more visually appealing. Restaurants know that this works. It's why that they plate your food up really, really nicely. It's also a big reason that so many of the recipes you'll see online do have these very fancy, complicated components because they're trying to make it look more visually appealing. It works for your taste buds and it looks great. Just because they do it doesn't mean that you have to though. And it doesn't mean that it's the most efficient use of your time and energy if you're on a weight loss journey and you're a busy person. So my all-time favorite way to do this is with, what the heck is that, pickled onions. And the recipe is very, very simple. All you need to do is mandolin up some red onions, put in some vinegar, uh, some salt, I like to put chili flakes, and we absolutely devour this. It's beautiful and it just adds so much flavor to meals. Pickled onions is where it's at. The other consistent one that I do is toasted sesame. So I just toast up a large batch of these. I keep them in the fridge and we actually have a little tiny dispenser like a everything bagel seasoning dispenser which makes it really easy to put them on basically every meal. Don't knock uh, herbs. Having some kind of herb that's in season that you can quickly chop up and just sprinkle over your meals. It's going to add so much flavor and prettiness. Lemon is another one. Lemon wedges, a little bit of lemon juice, spritz it on there. It's going to take things to the next level. And as you can see, there's only two of these components that I actually made myself. Chili flakes, hot sauce, it can be that simple. You want to have a very limited parameter. Here's, here's the thing. I've seen so many videos and I've actually got a recipe book which is build your own things and here's infinite numbers. You don't want infinite numbers. You don't want infinite combinations in that because it's overwhelming because there's too much choice. 
you really want to pick two things that you like and then you just do them consistently and then when, once you're confident you add in one more thing one of the biggest parts that you're trying to avoid with meal prep is overwhelm so don't make your meal prep feel more onerous make it feel lighter and easier so that you follow through and do it only switch things up if you're absolutely in 100%, a million percent bored of it because you've got enough variation in the different veggies that you're using based on seasons, kind of like greens that you're using, the way that you plate that together. There's so much vari variation in that that you don't need a lot of other variation in different things. Okay, so this is looking done. I don't love the color of it. If I was gonna make it again, I probably wouldn't toast it beforehand, but I was a good girl and I followed the recipe, so. When does that happen? What, that I'm a good girl? No. I'm gonna go and skate because two days ago I learned to drop in for the first time and I'm really need to go and actually solidify it again so really really scared really nervous gonna give that a go and then come back and make up a meal because I really don't like eating when I feel nervous about something but made this for Nick and I would eat this like there's nothing in it that wouldn't be amazing for weight loss and Nick is trying to be more intentional about his diet as well so I made this for you yeah that'll work nicely there you go ah, my love oh my goodness there's so much in there so goody we came back from skating it was a little bit demoralizing honestly it's taught me so much because I recently learned to drop in like this week I think I was saying I also had an eye appointment which I'd forgotten about so I got my brows done and my my eyelashes like tinted. This journey of learning to drop in has taught me so much about the process of learning. It doesn't feel good. I thought that once I learned how to do it, it would just click for me and everything would feel like amazing and normal and, and natural but it, it hasn't. And so I went and I did like 30 repetitions of it felt horrible nothing felt great but I was like I can control my reps I can't control right now how it feels I can't control like my form or anything like that like I can make little tweaks but really just doing the thing is what is going to get me better that is how I win at this game and I did a podcast recently about how to gamify your systems how to make dieting more fun so that you can win more because that's how children learn whereas adults we get super serious about things and then we, we never play and we always feel like we're failing, which means that we don't repeat those behaviors that are ultimately gonna get us to our goals because they're not satisfying to do and to keep doing. So if you wanna give that podcast episode a listen, it'll be linked in the description, it's a goodie. restaurant quality like if I, like all the veg all the hats okay so we got starch in there in the form of the potatoes and all of that we've got the veg but load of veg we've got the grains we've got the taste good we got everything going on let me just have a go with this cheers mmm it's gone cold I like the couscous in there get some of that tofu stuff mmm really yum I can't wait to go and inhale this off camera. 
not for food. Before I do that, let's talk about some of the common mistakes people make with meal prepping and how you can avoid them so that you are a prepping goddess. I mean, for starters, if you just follow this framework, cooking up your starches, making sure you always have some starches that you enjoy, having veggies ready to go, having some fat sauce, having some flavor components, whether you buy them or prep them, that is gonna give you the best bet to make some kind of bowls. The biggest mistake I see people making is that they try and prep recipes rather than prepping components. And then they're making big batches of things that they don't actually enjoy, so that ends up being left in the fridge. All these components that you've seen me use today, those are things that, regardless of what I make, they can be used in salads, stews, they can be uh, reheated, my kids can snack on them. And with the couscous, if I don't love it, I, I can freeze part of it. So it's not gonna go to waste. I've got so many options of what I can do. That get, brings me to the second mistake that people make though, is that they try and give themselves so many different things. They are constantly following meal plans. I hate meal plans for this reason, because it will say, prep X on this day, prep pancakes, prep this huge amount of stuff. Like, you prep this thing on Wednesday, Thursday. Like, they're trying to do so much prep. They're trying to create entire meals, put them in little containers. It's too much work, and it requires too much thinking. And so you're going to get very overwhelmed. Whereas if you keep those parameters simple, so for me, my parameter is like, what's in season? What's in season in terms of veggies? It's potatoes, it's kumra, like sweet potato, carrots. They're always in season. I've got some leek in there. What greens do I like? It's pretty much always broccoli. It's pretty much always some kind of mescaline or kale. What kind of salad dressing do I like? Pretty much always the same thing, which is that tahini one, or I use hummus, or I use avocado. I've always got those onions and I've always got the sesame seeds. It doesn't actually differ too much. And if I want it to, I experiment as you saw me do with this meal. And that's the third mistake that people make is that when they do experiment, they make huge quantities of things and they make it super complicated. They, they start from scratch. They think that they're going to feel like amazing when they follow someone else's recipes to the T. And then because it's not what they're used to, what they enjoy or what fits into their lifestyle, then they don't end up eating it or liking it. And then feeling like they're a failure at prepping. You'll notice what I did with that tofu is that I, used, I cooked a very small amount or prepped a small amount because I don't know if I like it. And honestly, after tasting it, it's okay, but I wouldn't make it again. So I'm glad that I made a small amount and didn't waste that. I'm gonna use the rest of the tofu to make some, put some garlic salt or some garlic powder with some soy sauce and maybe a bit of maple, cube it and put it in my air fryer. That's something that I know that I'm gonna use in sushi bowls and in salads. So I know that the rest of that's not gonna to go to waste. I hope you found this video helpful. Go and do a very, very small amount of prep. Even if you just have your starches and you buy everything else, you are gonna be absolutely fine. And let me know in the comments what you thought of this video and what of those different components you are going to either use or what are the frameworks you found helpful. And I'll see you next week for another video. Alright, bye!